a non-trivial tree graph will always have at least two end vertices. Remember that a tree graph is a connected graph with no cycles. Saying that it's non-trivial means it has more than one vertex, and end vertices are vertices with degrees equal to one, which are sometimes called leaves when we're talking about tree graphs. If you want more of a thorough introduction to tree graphs, check the description for a link to my lesson on tree graphs. We'll be proving this fun little tree graph result in today's Wrath of Math lesson. It's a pretty easy proof, so I recommend giving it a shot yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. Before we get into the proof, I want to quickly mention one of the things that's useful about this result. Suppose we're trying to prove something about some general class of tree graphs. Of course, in a proof, we don't know exactly what our tree graph looks like. But say we're in the induction step of an induction proof, where we're using induction on the number of vertices in a tree graph. Then, if we know that our general tree graph has at least two n vertices, we could delete either one or both of those guaranteed end vertices, and we would get another tree with fewer vertices, which means we could apply our induction hypothesis to that resulting tree. And we know we would have a tree because in a connected graph, deleting an end vertex doesn't disconnect the graph. And of course, if we have no cycles in a graph to begin with, we can't get a cycle by deleting a vertex. So this result can come in handy when doing induction proofs. With that out of the way, let's get to the main point of the lesson, which is, of course, proving this result. We begin the proof, predictably, by saying let t be a non-trivial tree graph. Now, where might we be able to always find end vertices in a tree graph? Let's just draw one and have a quick think about it. Here's a tree graph, and we could look at any path in this graph. For example, suppose we look at this path containing these three vertices. None of the vertices in this path are end vertices. But what if we look at a longest path in the graph? If we look at a longest path in the graph, we notice that the first vertex and the last vertex are both n vertices. They both have a degree equal to 1. And it seems reasonable to suspect that that might always be the case, because if these vertices had any additional neighbors outside of the path, then what we were looking at wouldn't be a longest path, because it could have been extended to those additional neighbors. And if these n vertices had any other neighbors on the path, besides the vertex immediately following or preceding them, depending on their position, then what would we have? we'd have a cycle, which can't be in a tree graph. So this seems like a reasonable place to start. Let's try taking a longest path in our graph T and see if we can show that the starting and ending vertex of that longest path must both be end vertices. So we'll say, let P be a longest path in T. And we'll write P as this sequence of vertices, starting at some vertex V0, which we'll also call U, then going to V1, to V2, and so on, all the way up to some second to last vertex we'll call Vn minus 1, and then a final vertex Vn, which we'll also call V. So P is a UV path, and it is a longest path in the graph T. And of course, P might not be the only path in this graph with this length, but there is no path that's longer than P. Another subtle but important thing we might want to point out here is that we know U is not equal to V. The first vertex is not the same as the last vertex. In other words, this path has a length of at least one. And we know that's the case because our graph T is non-trivial. So it's connected, it's got at least two vertices, so the longest path has to have a length of at least one. This is important, of course, because it means if we can show that both U and V have a degree of one, then we have shown that the graph has at least two n vertices. That's exactly what we're going to do. To explain the rest of the proof, I think a simple diagram will suffice. So here we just have a simple drawing of our path P. And remember that this last vertex, Vn, we're also calling V. We can see immediately that both U and V have to have at least one neighbor, of course, since they're in this path. U is adjacent to the following vertex, V1. So we could write UV1 is an element of the edge set of T. Additionally, 
the vertex v, the last vertex in the path, is adjacent to the preceding vertex, vn minus 1. So we could say v, vn minus 1, is an element of the edge set of t as well. So the degree of both of these vertices is greater than or equal to 1, because they both have at least one neighbor. So if we can show that they cannot be adjacent to any other vertices, then we're done. They both have a degree of 1. So the first important question, can u or v be adjacent to any vertices not on the path p? Of course, they can't. If either v or u has a neighbor not on p, then p is not a longest path because the path could be extended by including either of those additional vertices, which would contradict that P is a longest path in the graph. So that's nice and easy. What about the other possibility? Could U or V have any other neighbors on the path P? Any other neighbors besides V1 for U and VN minus 1 for VN? The answer again is certainly not. If, for example, the vertex u is adjacent to some vertex vi on the path other than v1, what do we get? You see it clear as day, we get a cycle, which contradicts t being a tree. This would be a cycle in a tree graph, which contradicts the definition of tree graph. And of course, the same problem exists if v is adjacent to some vertex vi on the path other than vn minus 1. We immediately get a cycle, which is a contradiction, because this path exists in a tree graph. So u and v each have one neighbor on the path p, and they have no neighbors that are not on p. And so what does that mean? Well, that means, of course, that the degree of u is equal to the degree of v, which is equal to 1. They both have a degree of 1. They are both end vertices. And so we have proven in any non-trivial tree graph, we will always have at least two end vertices. All we have to do is take a longest path in the graph, and then the first vertex and the last vertex of that path will be end vertices. And of course, we can't guarantee that there will be any more end vertices because the longest path sometimes is unique, even though it isn't always unique. For example, if we have this tree graph here, of course, we have exactly two end vertices. But we've now proven that's the minimum for a non-trivial tree graph. Any non-trivial tree graph has to have at least two end vertices. Hope this video helped you understand how to prove this fun little graph theory result. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, and if you would like to see me consume bugs while proving the Pythagorean theorem, I'll leave a link in the description to my recent lesson where I did that. That was a lot of fun. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. But I can't be lost to feel that way